Now let's take a look, a little closer look at the Management Studio. I want to show you a couple of little things that you're going to have to know to be able to successfully administer SQL Server 2005. First up, let's open the Management Studio. So I'll go to Start Programs, SQL Server 2005. Then I will come down to the Management Studio and I'll open that. Now, notice I'll have to connect to my SQL Server and I'll do that. Depending on how you closed this last time, it will open up in that same configuration. So depending on what order you're watching these videos in, that may or may not happen here. But just keep in mind in real life, however it was the last time you closed is what you'll see. I need to register a server, so I'm going to open the Registered Servers window. Okay, so I'll mouse over the Registered Servers tab. Now, if I didn't see the Registered Servers window, by the way, and I'm going to blow this thing away to show you, all I have to do is come up here to View and choose Registered Servers. And then notice you could do Control-Alt-G. But if I click that, it turns it on and it automatically pins it for me. Now, I already have Leesburg, which is my local instance, but I also have a named instance out there that I want to add. So all I have to do is right-click on my database engine, choose New, Server Registration, and notice the Server Registration dialog box pops up. Now all I have to do is tell it what server do I want to connect to. Now this will see other SQL servers on your network. So if you, you may have 8 or 10 servers out there and you could see them, or you could browse for more. So I'm going to choose the mark, the named instance that I have out there, and I can put a description on it if I would like. I'm going to leave it alone. I can go set connection properties if I would like, if I want to connect to a certain database uh, and all this sort of thing, network packet size for the, not right now, let's leave it alone. Oh, well, let me show you one thing right here. Notice we can encrypt this connection if we would like so that the data flying back and forth is encrypted. I can test this to see and it says yes, it tested successfully. And so I save this and you will notice now I have a new registered server out here in Leesburg called Mark. Okay, now. I can now at this point double click this and you'll notice I'm connected to this server and I can double click databases and start to look inside it and I can see my system databases out there and so forth now and then again I can move back up. So any servers that I want to work with I need to register them out here. One other thing that I could have done, I'm going to actually remove this thing Notice to delete a registered server, I just simply right click it and delete it. Let's say that I need a, I want a better designation. I'm going to do a new server group. And it says, what's the name of the group? And I'm just going to put named instances. You may want to call, you know, Western Region, Eastern Region, that sort of thing. And I save it. Notice now there's named instances. So now I right click and say new server registration. And I'll choose my mark named instance again. I won't test it this time. And now notice that I have kind of a, um, a treed relationship. The named instance registration is in the named instance folder and my main database is in the database engine folder. Okay, so I can create as many folders as I want out here or server groups, you'll notice. And so now I've got a new server group and I can put things in there. To delete these again, right click and delete them and I can remove those things. So it's very easy from an administrative standpoint to organize your SQL Server environment the way you need it to work in it. Okay? Great.